All right, so I'm going to be showing how to replace the battery on the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019 model A2141. All right, so first thing you're going to need is a uh, Pentalobe 1.2 or a P5 screwdriver. All right, and we're going to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. All right, so just undo the screw. The way I keep them, keep track of them, is I put them with the flat side down like that in the pattern I remove them. So as you can see, there's two here and then there's four along the bottom. So I put them in that layout on my desk to keep better track of them. All right, so let's go ahead and remove those. Okay, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that everyone can find my videos easier. All right, and if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider throwing a little my way. Every little bit helps, even a dollar is greatly appreciated. All right, so let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Okay, now that we've got all the screws out, it helps to use a suction cup, but you can also use the little air vent here to kind of lift up the lid here and then get under here. If you don't have a suction cup, you can also use tape, just put tape on it. You can use like two pieces, stick them like that, and then meet them in the middle like this so you can use it as a pull tab. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and use a suction cup for this, okay? So just take a suction cup, stick it on, and then pull it up. While you're pulling, you can get your fingernails or a pry tool underneath here, okay? And then you're gonna work your way down the side, going down the cover. Once you get close to around the middle, I use my thumb to push on the palm rest and then my fingernails here to pull up the cover and as well as from here, all right? Just like that, all right? Then we'll go around to the other side, same thing. Get around, okay? Get to the edge and then I use my fingernail again and pull that up. There you go, just like that. So now that we got both sides uh, pulled up, we're going to put the computer like this, all right? I wrap my fingers over like that. I take one finger to push on the cover here to slide it downwards. And then with this open area, I grab the cover here and I push down and pull down at the same time. All right, so just like this. Okay, you wanna be a little careful because you can cut yourself on this part here. So uh, the fingernails are kind of nice because they will rest against that and then prevent you from getting cut. But if you put your fingers too far, you can cut your fingers in there, right? And if you can't pull this down because it is really tough to pull that down, you wanna to go to the other side and we're gonna just go back and forth, switching from side to side to work it and pull it down, all right? So let's go ahead and pull this side. Okay, so there we go, we got this side down. And then once you get one side, the other side usually comes out pretty easily. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. All right, just like that. And you wanna be careful lifting it up, pulling it back, slide the cover out, and then flip it over just like that. All right, so we got the bottom cover off. Um, it's actually pretty clean inside this one, so I most likely don't have to clean anything. Um, I wonder why their battery failed. Maybe, I don't know. This cable looks a little bit rough there, but other than that, it looks good. Okay, so the customer actually brought their own battery and it looks like the battery actually goes this way. It's kind of weird. I've never seen one like this, the way they mounted this battery. Oh, actually, sorry. So the way they mounted the battery, you drop it in like this and then it looks like you pull the plastic off. So it's kind of weird because they didn't put any adhesive on the battery itself. So... Yeah, that's really strange to me. I've never seen one like that. And this one, the cable goes underneath the motherboard. So we are going to have to slide the battery in and then drop it down in place. Um, it looks like maybe to make it easier, I can put the adhesive on this side of the MacBook first um, and then drop it in. But normally the adhesive would be on the back here and then you'd have to hold it up, slide it into place and then drop it in. So I don't know. Um, this battery the customer brought is a little bit different. All right, anyways, next we're going to remove this little plastic piece here. Okay, let's zoom in so you can see that. Okay, hopefully my phone won't overheat. It's a pretty warm day today. So we're just going to lift this plastic piece up. You wanna be careful, do it slowly, so that way it slowly peels it up instead of tearing the foam, all right? So just like this. Okay, slowly work it up. There we go. So now we got this piece out. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. 
and be careful so it doesn't get too dirty and stuff might stick on it okay next thing we're going to do we're going to disconnect the battery cable here we're going to have to actually disconnect both sides eventually so that we can place it back onto the battery so let's go ahead and lift this piece up it's pretty interesting they put this springy side over here usually they put it closer to this connector but anyways peel up this piece a little bit so it's not on the connector here and then what you want to do is flip this latch up just like that once you flip the latch up you can get underneath the cable just grab it and then you can kind of wiggle and pull it back all right this cable is a little fragile so be careful with it just grab the thing and then wiggle and pull it back make sure that this is this latch is up if it's not up then you're not going to be able to pull it out all right then we're going to go ahead and do the same on this side peel up this piece okay just like that same thing flip up this little latch all right once you get that latch up go ahead and grab this cable and pull that out all right we're going to set this aside we're going to put this on the new battery once we install it okay next thing we're going to do is remove the screws from under here all right i believe they're both t5 but i could be wrong so let's go ahead and get the screwdriver we're going to switch to a t5 or torx 5 screwdriver bit all right and then let's go ahead and remove the screws here. So first we're going to remove this one, the big screw. All right. Once you remove this big screw, what you're going to want to do, as you can see, this metal plate here is still pressing down on the battery. So what you want to do is you want to get underneath there and lift it up slightly, just like that, so that it's no longer touching that board. All right. Once you've done that, we're going to open up the MacBook. All right. Open it up. And then we're going to press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds. This will drain any power or residual power on the board to prevent uh, risk of damaging to the other components. Okay, so we're just going to hold this down about 15 seconds. All right, so you should be good now. Basically what that does is it tries to turn the MacBook on and stuff while there's no battery connection. And then because of that, it drains the power from it. Okay. Now we're going to remove the other battery screw here, excuse me. Okay, and then to be safe, it helps to remove the trackpad as well. So I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to remove the trackpad just to be safe. All right, let's go ahead and remove, actually, okay, let's remove the trackpad screws here first. And then we'll take these out later because those are different size screws. So using the T5 screwdriver, we're going to remove the screws holding the trackpad in place. Okay, one, there's a lot of screws holding the trackpad in place, so make sure you keep them in order so that you can put them back in the same place. All right, two, three, four, five. All right, so get those five screws on this side out. Once you get those five screws, get the three screws down here out. Okay. Now that you've gotten those three screws out, we're going to get these five screws out. Okay. Again, the screws are different size, shape, and length, so if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. So you want to be very careful. Um, keep track of the screws. It looks like the two screws on both sides here, the, so I guess four screws, um, are shorter than the rest. But again, it's always a good idea to keep the same screws in the same spot. So you want to keep them in order in the layout that you're removing them just so you can put them back the same way. All right, now we're going to remove this connector here. Okay, again, switching to a T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. All right, let's go ahead and remove that screw. And then remove this screw. We're very likely going to have to take out all the screws for the um motherboard so keep that in mind this is going to be a long process to get and change this battery okay then once you remove the two screws we'll take out this metal plate sorry i'm like trying to line them up all right and then to remove the trackpad connector let me see if i can show this i'm going to try and move this cable off the way go so we're going to lift this connector up so i just get underneath with my fingernails 
and then I kind of just wiggle and pull it up, okay, just like that. And then you want to slowly peel this out. I like to hold this cable down here a little bit, try and stay close to the connector where the adhesive is held down, all right? You don't want to fold the thing over and cause creases. I don't know why there's some creases already here. Maybe somebody already took this out. All right, now you want to be careful. You don't want to flip the trackpad over because there are little washers on them and they fall off really easily. You want to set it down very gently because if you suddenly like put it down, it will like bounce and fling those little washers out everywhere. So we're gonna slowly lift and open the screen here and then we're gonna let this cable fall through. Okay, you wanna slowly open the screen here. Okay, then you can slide the trackpad over so that the cable can go through. All right, and then we're going to slowly slide this out. We go so let me show you here these are the little washers you want to be very careful with those so each one of these little screw mounts has a little washer on it and if you move it too quickly or set it down too hard the washers are just going to fly everywhere so you want to be very careful with that all right they're very easy to lose and they're very hard to pick up once you drop them it helps to use like a magnet to pick them up if you drop them somehow but uh, again, we're gonna have to be very gentle putting that down. There we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the battery here. Actually, let's go ahead and remove all the screws um, from the motherboard. Um, actually, which way would work better? Okay, Let, let's actually remove the battery first because if we remove the motherboard first and we need to flip the thing around or something, then the uh, motherboard might fall out. So we are going to remove the screws first from the motherboard, okay? Um, we're gonna try and remove as few as possible, um, but most likely, let's see here. This one, it's not too bad it looks like, but it goes underneath the motherboard here. So, hmm. Okay, are these all T5 screws? Those are T5, this is T3, 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 okay. So, let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna disconnect the ones that are holding the motherboard down and not so much the ones that are holding the other stuff down. So, I think most of them are T5 and a few are T3. So we got two T3 screws down here, so we're going to remove these two screws first, okay? Again, it's going to be a little tough to keep track of all of them, but do your best. Again, put them in the pattern that you're removing them. That's what helps me remember where all the screws came from. Okay, so we got those two out. Now we're going to go along here. So I'm going to go in rows, so two, and then we're going to do the four across the top here, switching back to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Okay, one, two, all right, three, oh, that's also a T3 screw, so this will be a little confusing. All right, three, let's switch back, I think this is a T5, four, okay like that all right and then let's see here we got another row one two three four as well hopefully you guys can see let me actually zoom out a bit more hopefully you guys were able to see so there was one screw there this one's t3 and then the other three are t5 so these two and then that one all right let's go ahead and remove the other t5 screws here one two I believe I did a screen repair video on one of these already, so if you need that, um, that's on another video. If you need the link, I can send that to you. Just post in the comment section below. All right, but we're just gonna go along and do these. All right, so we got those four out. Um, I don't know if I need to take out the heat sink screws. Let's see how far I can lift up the motherboard here. So the problem is finding a spot to lift the motherboard from. Um, I'm going to take this side near the speaker here and we can see we can kind of lift it up. But all these cables are kind of holding it down it seems. So 
we're likely going to have to undo a bunch of cables, which kind of sucks. But let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go ahead and let me see if I can zoom in a bit to be careful because there's stuff all over the desk with all these parts. So, okay, first thing we're going to do is remove the speaker cable here. So let's go ahead and peel that piece back. Once you do that, we're going to flip this latch and then we're going to use this plastic tab that we peeled out to pull the speaker connector out just like this. Okay, and let's see if that helps lift this at all. Not really. Hmm. We're going to have a tough time with this one. Let's go ahead and remove these two screws for this connector here. I believe those are T3 screws, Torx 3 screws, so we're going to have to remove those. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that. And this one. Okay, now that we've got those two screws out, let's go ahead and take this metal plate off. Okay, and then we're going to flip this connector up. All right, I just get under with my fingernail and then I kind of flip it that way. All right, let's see if that helps. Okay, that's better. Again, I kind of want to remove as few things as possible. Um, seems like it's being held in place up there, but not too much. Hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and I don't know if we have to remove all these cables. I think this might be the microphone cable and this is the fan cable here. Let's see, the fan cable might be holding it down, so let's go ahead and lift that out. Okay, same thing, peel this thing up, just like that. Flip the latch, once you flip the latch, you can go ahead and pull this cable. I think this might be held down with adhesive. No, it's not. Okay, so let's go ahead and, this one's for some reason, pretty difficult to remove. I'm getting underneath with my fingernails while I'm pulling it. I think there might actually be adhesive. Okay, let's see if that's good enough. There we go. Pull that back and peel that up. Yep, yeah, there's an adhesive definitely under there. So we're going to slowly peel up this adhesive and flip it over. There we go. Here you can see the adhesive that was holding it. Okay. All right, let's see if we can lift this better. It's about the same. Let's go ahead and remove this cable as well. All right, peel this up. All right, and then flip this latch here. All right, once you flip that latch, you can go ahead and get underneath and peel this. It looks like there's an adhesive under here as well, so you want to be careful peeling up the adhesive of these cables here very slowly and gently. All right and then do that. All right, there we go. We'll move that cable aside. Did that help at all? A little bit. All right, let's go ahead and peel this one up as well. It looks like we might have to disconnect everything. Holy moly. Okay, I think actually this might be the microphone cable here. So I'm gonna flip that latch and then pull this connector back. Okay, just like that. There we go. Let's see if this lifts more kind of not really hmm so what's holding all of this down okay it looks like it's lifting okay we're going to take out the um, USB-C power connectors here also using the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver okay likely don't need to remove this one but I'm gonna remove it just so I can see if I can flip it up a tiny bit more let's flip this latch up and bend that slightly out of the way okay and uh, that's a good amount so what I'm gonna end up doing um, if you've seen one of my other videos I'm gonna put a popsicle stick under there to keep keep it held up and we're gonna do the same thing with the other side so this side likely we can't lift it up that much either because of these cables so let's go ahead oops going out of view sorry so this side we can't flip it up much either so let's go ahead and lift these connectors out so we got the speaker connector here move that out of the way flip that latch okay then we're going to use this tab to kind of help pull this connector out kind of have to wiggle it a little there we go all right, let's go ahead and remove this cable. Um, I think this is for the keyboard. 
So peel that up, all right, flip this latch. I'm not gonna take the whole motherboard out because I don't need to and it caused more risk. So we're just gonna do it the simple way, all right? Once that latch is flipped up, you can go ahead and pull this tab out. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and see how far we can lift this up now. So get underneath there and that's kind of far enough. If I were to get a popsicle stick under there, that should be good. But uh, let's go ahead and disconnect at least this, these. Eh. Yeah, let's go ahead and remove these cables just to be safe because I don't want to yank them too hard. All right, so we'll remove this other fan cable, flip that latch up. Same thing as the other one, most likely it's held in with an adhesive underneath, so get under there, kind of wiggle it and pull it back. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just like this, and come on. Oh, the tape is still kind of holding on the connector. Make sure you peel it back far enough. There we go. Okay, this connector as well. Let's go ahead and remove that. Man, this one has so many connectors in it. I don't know if it has multiple microphones or what all of these are, but let's peel that up as well. There we go, flip that latch back. Once you flip that latch, go ahead and pull that connector out. All right, and then we're gonna disconnect this um, USB-C power connector as well. Okay. All right, once we get all of that out, we're gonna go through scraping out all the adhesive. All right, lift that out. Oops, actually, I was saying I should have done that before I took out the motherboard stuff, but I guess I ended up doing it reverse. <sighs> okay, so there we go. I mean, the motherboard's still kind of holding itself in place. We can lift it up quite a bit here, okay? And then we can, I'm gonna, get some popsicle sticks. So I'm not gonna do this now, but I'm gonna show you what I mean. Give you an idea. You can use little plastic pry tools or whatever for this, but I just use popsicle sticks. All right, so basically lift that up, get the popsicle stick under there. If you can, you might have to, let's see here, oops. Lift it from here, okay. Lift it up and then we get a popsicle stick under there. So that's just to hold this up so that we can get the board from under here. And we're going to do that on both sides. You don't want to use something too thick. You can use credit cards too if you want. Um, but as you can see, this lifts it up just enough so I can slide this part of this connector out. Okay, so we're going to take those popsicle sticks out for now because we don't want to keep stress on the board while we're not doing anything with it. Okay. And then let's go ahead and pry the battery out of here. Okay, so this has some foam adhesive here. So what I use, I use this thin uh, flexible uh, scraping pry tool. Okay, this is supposed to be like for, it's from, I was told it was from a pharmacy and they used it to like scoop up the pills, I guess, and count them. Um, I found something very similar, which is used for like frosting. Um, the only thing is it, it's a bit thicker. So if you can see here, um, it's about maybe two or three times as thick. So what I did was I filed the end down to make it super thin and super sharp. Um, so this, um, it dulled over time, but this is actually sharp enough. I can cut paper if I, if I tried. Okay. But anyways, this one, it I use it for prying tool, prying stuff open and everything. So it has this slight bend in it. Because of that, um, I have to make sure I use it the right way. So it has like a curve like this. If you use it this way, it will scrape the battery. You don't want to do that. So you want it to go this way. So it actually pushes underneath the battery. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. So we got the battery here. We're going to scrape out the battery. All right, so it helps to do it starting this way. Um, this design's nice because there's a nice big gap here, so it makes it a little bit easier. You have a spot to start. The battery will kind of bend up a little. I don't know if you can see that, but don't worry about it. We're going to be just scraping this out, okay? I've heard some people say they use, like, um, floss or something. I don't know how they do that. I've tried it. I couldn't get it to work. Um, but I guess they use, like, floss and some rubbing alcohol, and they probably just pour a bunch of rubbing alcohol underneath. 
Okay, so I'm gonna push the tool all the way underneath here. Okay, if I can, just like this, okay. Oh, it might help to actually do one pack at a time. So let's finish this one and then we'll work on the one back there. Okay, so we're gonna keep going just like this. Okay. And we're just gonna scrape this whole battery pack out. Okay, just like this. And you wanna be very careful because the screens on these laptops are super expensive, so. I tested before I started this, it was showing the um, low battery warning, just the red battery and nothing. So yeah, all right, so there we go. Scraped up this whole battery. There you go, you can see it lifts up. So now we're going to go ahead and scrape underneath this one. Okay, just like this. All right, there we go. You want to be careful not to scrape underneath the speaker. I think someone told me they were, actually no, they were talking about one of these connectors. I think they broke, so. But if you scrape underneath the speaker, you might detach that. It's just an adhesive underneath, so it shouldn't really be an issue, but it, it helps to be a little cautious and not just go recklessly destroying everything. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, this adhesive is pretty tough. I'm pushing pretty hard to cut through this stuff. Okay, if you do this, um, do not use like a knife or something because if it's sharp, you will end up cutting through the battery and there's a good chance that you will end up having a fire or burning up something. I've had someone like end up do doing this and they burnt one of these. They somehow caused this to like burn up and then it melted like, not the speaker, but they had some stuff there that like burned and melted so you want to be careful um if you do use some kind of knife you want it to be like kind of rounded on the edge and also you want it flexible but again if it's too sharp like as you saw when i push this it kind of goes up then that can be bad so if you do use something sharp and flexible make sure that you keep the pressure going straight because if the blade here is sharp and you go sideways it's definitely going to cut into the battery all right, and that's very dangerous. Um, if you peel these things back, like if you somehow puncture it, um, you'll actually notice like a sweet chemically smell or something. Um, and I think that's like the lithium or whatever's in there. So you wanna be very careful. If you smell that, um, you don't wanna keep breathing that in. That stuff's toxic, okay? At least that's what I found online. So, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and continue crying out this battery. All right, this might be tough working at this angle. And let's see, this adhesive is super strong. Jeez. Okay. I might have to try with my other tool. The other one's a little bit wider and then sharper, so it might be better. All right, go ahead and get this back out. try it going from this direction and doing it. I don't know if I can keep it in camera. I'll try. Okay, let's see here. Can I move this up here? There's too much stuff. All right, let's zoom out a tiny bit. A tiny bit more. There we go. All right. I'm going to have to make sure I'm doing this the right way. There we go. And you want to be careful with all these cables and connectors, of course. Cutting and scraping. This is actually hurting my broken clavicle. <laughs> and I haven't had much pain in that for a while, so... I don't know. Hopefully I'll be okay. Okay. Retesting the cut areas. Okay. 
version. Last bit. There we go. Okay, so we cut that one out. All right, time to work on the smaller one. My clavicle rests a little bit, it's kind of hurting. Okay, pull this back. Continue working our way down. if I'm getting my head in the way, but there we go. Okay, so now let's turn this around and we're gonna have to get these packs out. So let me show you what on the other side, hopefully I can show this. I'm gonna hold on to the motherboard since I took all the screws out. But here you can see on the other side, there's all these holes here. So when you go and pry through, you wanna be careful because if you go through these, you don't wanna end up hitting the screen with the pry tool if you use a pry tool that's kind of smaller. Okay, for this, I might want to use actually the bigger one here, um, but we'll see because there's not too much room to work on this. So on this side, it looks like you can go in from this side or this side, but you want to be careful because there's this little foam stuff here. All right, so let's see. I'm going to use the smaller one and let's see if I can go starting from this side. I'm going to look underneath to see what's there. Okay, so it should be okay as long as I clear this one little hole there. Okay, so we're going to start this way and we're going to go ahead and get the tool under. Okay, just like this. There we go. It went all the way through. No problem. Pull this back. Work our way all the way over to the edge. Okay, not bad. See under here. I want to make sure I don't go through those spots. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and go this way. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Continue working our way. Making me sweat. It's too hot today. All right. All right. Let's check inside again. All right. Once I clear that, it should be okay. So I'm going to go halfway over. And we're going to work diagonally this time. tough part will be clearing this whole piece here so I'm gonna try and work my way over diagonal a little bit go let's see if we can go this way okay man, I need to rest a bit okay start catching a breather there we go got that let's go ahead and do the other side now hopefully you can see all right let's actually start from this side Come on, adhesive, let go. Sorry, I'm rolling my shoulders to loosen them up. Okay. There we go. Pull this back out. Okay, work our way down. Cats are meowing outside. Alright. 
continue working our way down. I think we're hitting that one area, so let's go diagonal. There we go. Sweet. Perfect. Almost there. Okay, last bit. There we go. All right, so we cut all the adhesive up. Let's go ahead and turn this thing around. Okay, now we're going to lift the battery up. You wanna carefully lift all of it at the same time if you can. Oh, let's go ahead and put the popsicle sticks in. Okay, so we're gonna to have to lift it up. Just get underneath however you can. I use my fingernails, okay. Once I got that, I'm gonna lift up from here. Okay, and let's get the pop skull stick in there. If you have shorter pop skull type stick things, that would work better. This is a little bit long, but we'll see. This should be okay. Lift that up, get that one in there. Okay, now we're going to lift this up and slowly get this piece out just like that. So there we go. We got the whole battery pack out. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. Then we're going to take these popsicle sticks out for now because we are going to have to scrape out all this old adhesive. All right, so to get out the adhesive, I just use this plastic scraping tool. And some of it, as you can see, is already coming up. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to get all of that old adhesive out. Again, the new battery didn't come with the adhesive for some reason, so I'm going to have to just put some kind of adhesive there. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and scrape all of this up. So just get underneath a bit, and then you can slowly peel this out. This adhesive at least peels pretty cleanly. On some of the models, the adhesive doesn't peel clean at all. Okay, the only thing is when we scrape it up, you can see it's not completely clean underneath. So because it didn't completely scrape out cleanly, we're going to have to use some rubbing alcohol to get out the residue that scraped up and is left behind. Okay, but as you can see, most of it comes out pretty nicely. Okay, underneath the corner, and then peel that up. Just like that. Yeah, this one, the adhesive peels out quite nicely, actually. Not perfect, but pretty good All right. this one the way it peeled up is actually pretty clean you don't even have to do a complete cleaning with the um, with the rubbing alcohol but I'm gonna do it anyways just cuz I like to make sure it gets a good um, adhesion down all right This one, because of the way it is, I'm likely going to put the uh, double stick adhesive here first instead of on the battery. The smaller packs here, I'll likely put on the battery first. Okay. You can see this stuff is peeling up pretty well. Could be because the computer's um, relatively new, so the adhesive isn't like degraded or anything. Um, yeah, so the adhesive is stuck under here. There we go. as much of this residue as they can so that way it's easier to clean with the rubbing alcohol.
Okay, so the adhesive in the center is actually not as nice. Looks like this kind of adhesive, um, I'm going to have to just scrape off. I don't think I can peel this. As you can see, when I pull it, it just stretches and then it just tears. So this kind of adhesive sucks. I was hoping that the whole thing would be the same. At least it looks like I can scrape it off pretty cleanly. It's not leaving too much residue behind, so that's a good thing. Yep, I don't think I'm going to have to really clean this side much because the adhesive comes out quite nicely. It's a tiny bit of residue, but not much. of it's coming out. There we go. So now let's go ahead and clean up all this adhesive residue, right? I'm going to have to clean up the residue that's stuck to this as well. Let me try with my plastic scrapey tool if I can scrape it off this thing. No, not really. A little bit of it came off. <laughs> okay. Scrape off this bit as well. go. Alright, so let's go ahead and clean this up. So we're going to get some paper towel here and some rubbing alcohol. So that's 91%. I'm just going to put a little bit on there. I got in a spray bottle, but you can get those regular bottles. You don't need a spray bottle. Okay, and we're just going to try and clean up this residue here if we can. Looks like it's coming up, so looks like we're good. Just go ahead and rub the adhesive off with the rubbing alcohol. I'm going to spray a little bit directly there. Okay. Okay, it's coming up, so it's good. Got all the adhesive residue off on that side. Let's go ahead and go on to this side. center. This one's a little tricky because it's kind of all these little holes everywhere so I'm just going to get it all on the paper towel and go ahead and scrub it off. Take a little area at a time.
Alright, let's get a little more rubbing alcohol there. Continue cleaning this. Almost there. Like we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna use this air blower and get off the lint from the paper towels. Okay, I'm gonna look at the bottom of the old battery so I can put the adhesive back the same way or similar. Okay. So here you can see how they put the adhesive here. So it got the strips going down here. Okay, then we got one at the top over this rectangle and then one going here and one going here. Okay, so these two, the top and then the middle. And then the other one just has the three going across. I'm not gonna put three, it doesn't need that much adhesive. Okay, so let's uh, prepare the battery. So again, this battery, I don't know why they did it this way, but it's like this. Then it goes underneath, and then it drops into place like that. So, yeah, so they did this a little different. It's gonna, we're gonna have to thread this underneath first, and then drop that all into place. Okay, so I'm gonna prep the battery real quick. Let's get the MacBook out of the way. Okay. Get this here. Adhesive residue. Okay. So again, um, I'm gonna put some adhesive here. They put a little sticker here, so hopefully that's not like some warranty thing if they need to return it. Alright, let me grab the acrylic adhesive. Again, it doesn't need as much adhesive as they put on there. So let's see. I'm probably gonna change it up. Um, I can put two strips this way. This one I'm a little worried because of the sticker, so I'm going to put the adhesive that way. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the adhesive here. There we go. Alright, so let's get one this way. Okay, stick it on like this. Like that. This adhesive is pretty strong, so don't want to use too much because if we have to take this back out, it's going to be quite difficult. Might have made more sense to actually put it the sideways way, but uh, we'll just do it this way. All right. Go ahead and go this way. Like that. Put another piece just like this. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. I don't need the rubbing alcohol anymore. Do the same thing as the other side, just so it's the same. So if for some reason it needs to be taken out, there's not going to be any confusion. It'll be the same on both sides. Okay. Okay, now the center again, we're going to put on the MacBook itself. So let's go ahead and get that. Okay, take the MacBook here. All right, so we had one strip going that way. small piece below it. Okay. The piece above it. And we have two pieces next to it. Okay, this will be more than enough to keep the battery from moving around. All right, there we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do, oops, let's put this all back together. Done with the scissors. Okay, so we're gonna now peel off all of this. Helps to use kind of like a needle or tweezers for this. All right, I'm gonna use, let's try with these. I got some new kind of needle nose pliers that let's see if it will grab this better. Not really. Nope, okay. Yeah, it grabs that way better. The only thing is getting initially to start.
that off. All right, I'm gonna move this aside. We're gonna do the same thing with the battery. Actually, let's, yeah, let's get the battery over here and see if I can do it from here. Okay, so we're gonna do it this way. To be safe, I don't wanna use the metal tool on the battery itself, so let's go ahead and just peel it by hand. These ones are actually coming out pretty easily. Sorry, I'm going off camera a bit, but I don't have room on my desk and I don't want to drop the MacBook on the ground. Okay. Almost there. All right, all the adhesive was peeled up. Put those pliers away. All right, let's get the popsicle sticks back underneath here. Okay, it helps you can actually lift it from this side now. Okay, so let's get the popsicle stick underneath. Okay, same thing with the other side. Get the popsicle stick under there. There we go. Now that we got that all lifted up, let's go ahead and grab the battery. Okay, make sure this is lifted out of the way. Okay, so this battery, we're gonna have to slowly get this into place. Okay, popsicle sticks are a little bit in the way. So you can see it might help to have a second person to help doing this because that connector needs to stay up and go over this piece. So if you have someone to help, that might be useful. Uh, let's see what we can do here. We're going to kind of go in at an angle to get part of it started. Okay, that's pretty tough. There we go. Come on. Get that over there. There we go. Get that underneath. And there we go. Okay, so now we're going to slowly let this down. Okay, make sure everything looks lined up. Uh oh, we already dropped it in. So slowly let this down okay this part already stuck down on its own okay so we got all of that there we go let's take the popsicle sticks out all right so the one nice thing with this is this board can move around a lot because all the slack so as long as you have this battery stuff clearing all the screws and it's not going to get caught on anything you should be good let's go ahead and peel this thing off Okay, make sure this sticks down. Again, I don't know why they did it this way, it's kind of weird. But uh, So they put this weird suction sticky pads on here, and then we peel off these blue tabs, so it's kind of weird. I've never seen them do it that way before, it's kind of strange. Alright. Peeling this stuff up. Alright. Peel this up. Alright, peel these up. All these stickers say like authorized provider only or something like that, so. can do it on your own. All right, there we go. We're done. Set that aside. Again, make sure the battery's all pressed into place. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and reconnect. Uh-oh, camera's... All right, sorry about that. My phone actually overheated. I need a better recording setup. This camera runs too hot on my phone. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and reconnect everything. And then we're going to screw in the battery and hopefully everything will be good. All right, so let's zoom in and let's go ahead and redo all the connections. All right, so we got the power connector here. We're going to flip this over. You want to be careful. Make sure everything is lined up again. Actually, let's go ahead and put back the 
motherboard screws first so everything make sure everything is sitting flat down again properly okay looks like this part is trapped under here this motherboard sorry the battery connection here so I'm gonna see if I can pull that back slightly oh man this part of the battery connection went a little bit oops sorry I'm zooming too much so I just noticed this part of the battery is going a little bit too far underneath there so I don't know if I can somehow get that to come back out or not because this whole part here is slightly too far up and of course now that the adhesive is there I don't think I can just pry this back up that's gonna be risky that's the one thing I hate with the adhesive on these things is if you screw up a little bit you're pretty much stuck with how it is so let's try and pull this back a little bit I mean it shouldn't be too bad because you can just clamp it down there but I'm gonna try and pull it back just so it's more like it should be okay back slightly and I kind of hate these ones all right so let's go ahead and get that in didn't work so great come on just a little more okay get that slightly out there we go at least now the motherboard's completely down it's not resting on that see if I can get it to move a tiny bit more there we go okay now that we got that back on top let's go ahead and make sure everything is flushed down okay and then we're gonna go ahead and put back the screws so we got four going across the top here using a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver let me zoom out so you can see all of this there we go more there we go okay Let's go ahead and get our T5 screwdriver. Okay, so much stuff going on over here. Got the T3 in here. I'm gonna switch to the T5. Okay, too much stuff. Hold on, let me get the screwdriver and then I will be back. Oh wait, here we go, there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and put those four screws real quick. Make sure the motherboard is seated properly again you want to also make sure all these connectors are on top you don't want to have any trapped underneath because then you're not going to be able to pull them back out once you tighten everything back down okay that connector this connector is still on top good none of the connectors fell underneath okay so we can get all four here and across the top one for the wireless antennas here. Okay. That one as well. All right. Now we're going to do the four across this side. Remember that one of them is a T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. All right. Let's get one here. I'm going to put the other T5 screw first, all the way over here. If you're wondering, the RAM, the SSD, the processor, the GPU, everything is soldered down to the motherboard. So you can't upgrade or replace any of that. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. Let's go ahead and put this screw in here. Okay. Let's see, then we got the other two T3 Torx 3 screws here. This one in this corner. Okay, and the other one in this corner. There we go. So we got all the motherboard screws in. Now we're going to reconnect all the connectors and then put those little um, metal latches back on top okay so let's see here let's do the keyboard I believe this is a keyboard connector I didn't pull up the whole 
thing, so I'm not sure. So peel, make sure to peel that plastic back. Let's zoom in to make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so we're gonna go here, get that lined up. Okay, and then pull that in, just like that. Once you get that connection all the way in, we're gonna slide our fingertip over the top to push that latch back down, right? Make sure the connection looks nice and even and then put that adhesive back down. Okay, let's go over to the other side here. Same thing, let's get this speaker connector back in. Okay, pull that into place, slide our finger over to put the latch back down, and put the adhesive back over. Okay, let's go ahead and get the fan connector here back in. You might have to help push this back so that it can go in evenly. Okay, get that lined up. Pull that over, you can push that adhesive back down, and then slide our finger over and put that latch back down. Get this tab back over, and go ahead and go with this one. I think it's a microphone, but I'm not sure 100%. Get that connector in, slide that over, All right? Once that's in, same thing, slide our finger over to latch it back down, put that back over. Now for the charge port, just slowly bend that over. You want to make sure it's lined up properly. Okay. It's a little bit difficult to see. You might have to push it over a little. And there we go. Alright, holding it into place. Let's go ahead and get the metal cover. Okay. Get the T3 Torx 3 screw that in. I'll put that loosely just so we can make sure to get it all lined up and then move that in place. Get the second screw in. Tighten that down. Go ahead and check this. Tighten that down. Go. Cut both in place holding that completely down. All right let's move over to the other side. Let's get the fan connector in. Alright, pull that into place and then slide your finger over the top to latch that back down and then just push this back down to tape it back in place on both sides. Okay, continuing over to the right hand side, I'm going to have to move the trackpad out of the way because it's in my way now. Carefully lifting it up and moving it out of my way. Okay. Go ahead and work on this side. Same thing, get this connector for the speaker here. Get that in place. Slide this latch down and then put that tape back on top. Same thing with this connector here. I'm not exactly sure what this is for. I think it might be for the touch bar. Okay. I don't know, there's several connectors here so I'm not sure because I know this is for the touch bar as well. So this one, I'm not too sure. All right, get that latch in. All right, once you got that, since I didn't take the whole motherboard, I don't know what all these things are connected to. Flip that latch down, push that in, make sure that adhesive goes back into place. Get this connector back over, make sure it's lined up, click it down. All right, get this one. Again, I think there's a microphone connector, but I could be wrong. Get that lined up, pull that into place, slide your finger over the top, and then put the tape back down. Okay, let's get the last USB-C power connector in. There we go, line it up, push it down. Okay. Get the T3 or Torx 3 screw. Line it up. Alright, loosely fit that. The other one. Same thing, get it lined up. Okay, Ooh, did that screw just come out on its own? Okay, well, let's get this one in then. Alright, let's get the other one. 
tighten it up and tighten that into place. Why is that screw not going in all the way? That's up. Oh, is that screw stripped or something? That's weird. Oh. This screw, I think the threads on this are stripped. It's too small. That's pretty crazy. Okay, well, let's hold this down and try again. I don't know. That doesn't want to go in. So I guess this one will be holding it in place completely. I might put like a drop of super glue or something to hold that down. Okay, that screw works fine. I don't know what's going on with this screw. Again, it's, yeah, it's not holding at all. That's really strange. So, I don't know. This screw is like stripped or something. I'm gonna put some, I don't know if thread locker will work. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of super glue because I don't think thread locker will hold it if the threads are completely ripped out. So I'm gonna put a very tiny bit of super glue on this, just on the threads. Okay, I'm going to put that in there and hopefully that will hold. I don't know if it will or not. I'm just going to hold it straight down because it definitely isn't going to screw in. Okay, that's holding in place. Good. All right, let's go ahead and put the trackpad in zoom out so the trackpad is there's a little trick to it so I'll show you here again you want to be careful make sure that you got all the washers are still on there okay there's these little circle ones and then these oval ones on the double screws all right so now what we're gonna do let's go ahead and open up the back book slightly just like this okay just like before and slowly slide this into place gently let it down okay Lift the connector in, just like that. Slowly get it down. All right, now we're gonna slowly lift the trackpad up into place, just like this. Okay, you wanna be very gentle. Slowly getting that lined up. There we go. All right, now you're gonna keep holding underneath Okay, hopefully you can see. And then, oops, we have to be using, are we on the T5? Okay, make sure you're using the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver bit. Okay, and then what I look to do is I'm gonna put one screw on each corner here. Again, this is a little tricky, so you wanna keep holding it. And we're just loosely fitting the screws, okay? If you can, you can actually put all the screws in at the same time. All right, so we're gonna just get these two corner ones first. All right, again, we're just loosely fitting it. You'll see why in a bit. All right, get this one as well. All right, you wanna keep holding the thing up. You don't wanna let it drop down or slam down. Okay, now that you got those four, you can slowly, carefully let the screen close down. Okay, and then we're going to loosely fit all the rest of the screws in. You'll see why in a bit. Okay, we're just going to get all these screws back in. We're not tightening any of them down, okay? We're just getting the screws to stay there so that they are in place. All right, so let me show you what's going on here. This screw's a little tricky. Okay. So here's why we're loosely fitting them. If you can see the screw here, I can actually move this whole thing around and that means the trackpad is not gonna be centered. So let's go ahead and click this cable back into place. All right, make sure and get it all lined up. 
there's a little dust on it. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. Get that lined up. Click that down. All right. So we got this connected. Let's go ahead and put back the um, little bracket using the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. down there we go okay so now what we're going to do i'm going to take the bottom cover here all right let's zoom out a bit and i'm going to actually click it into place here okay get it lined up and i'm going to just click the sides in okay flip this over all right let's open this up okay so here you can see this piece it's not really centered so what we're going to do, we're going to take some tape and then center it using the tape, okay? So to do that, I take the tape, so I use these over until they're not sticky anymore. But basically, I take the tape and then I fold over the edge so that this is like a release tab. And what I'll do is I'll stick part of the tape there. As you can see, I can move the trackpad around. And we want this to be centered, so you kind of want to use this tape to help you guide this and center the whole trackpad. Um, you'll actually want to use two, so we'll get one on either side like this. Okay. And then we're going to use that to help center this. So here you can see how much play it has, so we'll move it a slightly that way and then I'll move it slightly that way. Then we'll just check and make sure it's centered. So just like that. And just like that. Once you get it taped in place, you want to pick it up and check. It looks like it's a little too far to the left. So we're going to undo this tape, undo this tape, and slightly move it over to the right. Again, this is very kind of a little delicate. You want to make sure to get it all centered. Here we go. Okay, let me check it again. And I think it's good maybe a tiny bit up on this side just a tad bit barely okay okay if it's if it's slightly off it's no big deal it's more just um, it kind of bugs me if it's not centered properly I know it will bug other people um, so kind of try and get it as centered as possible all right I'm gonna flip this back over then since I didn't put these sliding parts back in, we could easily just pop this back up. Okay, it's a lot easier than the first time. Okay, just like that, and we'll take that out, move that out of the way. Okay, now that we got that done, you can go ahead and press down the adhesive here. All right, last two screws. Oops, actually I forgot the two little screws holding this bracket. Don't forget that one. Okay, so we're going to get this as well the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver again. Okay, get this lined up. Just like that. And get this last one lined up as well. Oops. Tiny screws are so annoying, it's kind of tough to get them lined up right. There we go. Okay, second one, tighten that in. Okay, all right, now we just got the battery screws left. Actually, let's zoom in here so you can kind of see better. All right, so first we're going to have to put this small one over here. You want to make sure to line this up with the little screw hole there. Let me see if I can see this. It's hard for me to see at that angle. So here you can see it's a little bit off. We're going to have to adjust it slightly over to the right. Okay, so we're going to have to move this over to the right and up. All right, it's hard to do this with the camera in my way, so I need to kind of look at it. Okay, let's see here. Hopefully we got that lined up. And let's get this screw in. There we go. 
Okay, oops, that's a T5 screw. I was using the T3. Make sure you use the right screwdriver. T5, okay. Now we're trying to hold it lined up. There we go. And then you want to check this. Make sure the gold pads are lined up also over here. Okay. And then we're going to push that tab down, tighten this screw in place. There we go, just like that. Now we need to put this tiny cable back in. Sorry, it's not centered, but there we go. Let's get this tiny cable. Make sure this latch is up. Again, this is a little bit tricky, but get this tiny cable in. You might have to hold this back so you can see what you're doing. All right, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in video, but hopefully you can. Okay, get that. Come on. Let's turn it sideways so it's a little bit easier for me to work on. Just like that. Okay. Come on, come in. There we go. And use the plastic tab here to help pull it in. Once you do that, slide your finger over to latch it down. There you go. You can see that connector is in. All right, push this tape back down. All right, same thing with the other side. Okay, now I can do it this way probably. All right, make sure that latches up again. And then get that in. Use the tab to slide it over. Hold it in place. Slide the latch down. There we go. We got the battery completely reinstalled. All right, everything else, make sure all the connectors are in. If you forgot any connectors, make sure to disconnect the battery and then press and hold the power button again. Oops, sorry, let me zoom out. Okay, so there we go. We got everything back in. Let's go ahead and test it real quick. So the way I test it, I don't put the bottom cover back on yet. I'm just gonna open it like this. Okay, and we're gonna get the plug and plug the charger back in. Usually you'll know it works if you press the trackpad and you feel it clicking. So there you go, it's clicking. I did forget, oops, <laughs> I forgot to tighten down all the T5 screws, but here you can see it's, it's clicking. So that means it's working. All right, let's go ahead and tighten all these down. I did leave the tape in there, so it should be okay. Here you can see the Apple logo's coming on, so we are good. Before it wouldn't show the Apple logo and it just kept showing the charging thing. But anyways, let's go ahead and tighten all the T5 um, Torx 5 screws. Normally you would do this before doing the uh, reconnecting the battery and everything. So if you miss this step, you want to go slowly and carefully. You don't want to accidentally drop anything metal or conductive inside the computer because it is live right now. And the battery, it's to all... To use English as the main oh. language, press the return you can key. See. I guess they turned it on and off so many times it's going into the recovery menu or something. Okay, so we got those five. Let's get these five. Okay. Then of course we're gonna unplug the charger and make sure it's working on, on battery itself. Okay, then don't forget the three down here do want to check and make sure the trackpad is centered. We did use tape to hold it in place, so it should be okay. Okay, so we got all those T5 or Torx 5 screws in. Switching back to the Pentalobe 5, let's go ahead and put the little sticker back over the battery board. Okay, the way you kind of make it centered here, let's see here. I don't remember if this one, okay. So this one, these two pieces um, straddle this connector here. So let's zoom in here so you can see. I think my phone's about to overheat, so I'm gonna have to be quick with this. All right, so have this straddle back over there and then line it up. You can actually see also there's this little curve there that you wanna line it up with, right? Push back down that pad and then push those two pads, right? I'm unplugging it. We'll see it should stay on. Okay. Oops, way too far. Okay, let's go ahead and put the bottom cover back on now. So as you can see, it's staying on, so we're good. All right, bottom cover. You wanna slide the back back in, so opposite of how we took it out. So you kind of have this part kind of slightly raised up, and then we're gonna, we're gonna slide these 
little latches back in, right? Just like that. Same thing with the other side. Make sure that the edge is lined up, okay? And then slowly slide it back while you're kind of holding this area down, all right? Slide it back, there we go. And then continue, slide this back again, okay? Oops. All right, slide that, there we go. Lift it up and make sure one more time. All right, once that's done, make sure the upper part here is flush and then these sides are flush. Once you're good, go ahead and click it down, click the center down as well. There we go, we're gonna, we're gonna put back the P5 or Pentalobe 1.2 screws. And then it's always good to do a PRAM and SMC reset. I believe they um, made it so the SMC reset doesn't work properly anymore on these. So we're gonna do the um, PRAM reset at least, and I'll show you how to do that. It's always a good idea to do PRAM and SMC reset whenever doing uh, major hardware replacements or doing big software updates. All right, so we're gonna put the four back, but other than that, we're pretty much done, all right? If you're wondering what a PRAM and SMC reset does, you can just Google PRAM, that's PRAM, all right? PRAM reset, and then it will tell you kind of an explanation, but basically it will reset like some settings that the Mac stores. All right, it's not gonna delete any of your data or anything, so don't worry about that. And it's very easy to do, so, yep. All right, so let's go ahead and flip the MacBook over. Let's open up the screen and see what's going on here. It's saying, choose your language, so I'll choose English. Okay, we're done with the tape, so we can take that out. All right, it's loading up. As you can see, it's running completely on battery, no chargers plugged in. So we should be good. I think they're making it go into a recovery mode. I'm gonna plug it in just so the battery's more charged when the customer comes to pick it up. Interesting. I guess they actually wiped the computer. So I'm gonna hold the power button and we're gonna go ahead and shut this down. Okay, so PRAM reset. After you turn it on, you wanna do Command Option PNR. Okay, Command Option PNR, just like this. When the computer starts up, the screen should show and then it should flash off. And that's how you know you did the PRAM reset properly. So you see the Apple, it shut off and then I can let go and it should show up to the Apple again. And that's how you know you did a PRAM reset properly. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I don't think the SMC reset will work. I'm gonna try it, but I think they got rid of that. Um, so we'll see, all right, so I'm not doing anything, the computer should start itself back up. Again, that's how you know you did the PRAM reset properly. There you go. All right, so it looks good. And it looks like they, for some reason, wiped the OS on here. So, yeah, or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe they bought it used or something. But there you go. Okay. Come on, restart. All right, I'm gonna try the SMC reset as well, but I don't think it'll work. So SMC reset is usually control option shift on the left side and then the power button. And yeah, it didn't do anything. Normally that would shut off the computer, so. To use English as um, the main language, yeah. press the All return right, I'm gonna key. turn this off completely. Okay, we'll let it charge up and I'm just gonna clean it up. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, again, please like, subscribe, share my channel with others. Thank you for watching.